and take a closer look at the slide editor so that you can create some really advanced and really nice looking slides right inside ProPresenter. You can utilize things like scrolling text and transparent slide objects, custom shapes, and even websites right inside the design of your slides. So let's go to our editor and right up here you'll see all the different objects that we can add to our slide. So the first is for a text box which is uh, pretty standard. Next we have a rectangle tool where we can create different uh, rectangular solids and we can uh, change the corner radius of these to make them rounded rectangles or if you set it high enough it'll actually turn into an oval or a circle. Then we can create freeform shapes, and so we can just draw random shapes, but we can also drag and make these rounded, and so we can make any sort of custom shape we want and change the uh, outline and fill color of that. Then we can add images, video, and live video to our slides. We also can add websites and ticker text, and I'm gonna go through these in just a second. Next we have our ruler so we can see exactly where our items are on our slide and if we drag out from the ruler you'll see that we get a guide so we can align our different slide objects and to get rid of that all we do is pull and drag that away from the edge. Then the other two options right here are about our slide object ordering. So if you have multiple objects on a slide this will allow us to send things all the way up to the front or send things all the way to the back. Then over here we have different properties. The first one is our document properties. So this isn't just for this one slide, it's for every single slide in this document. We can change those properties. Then we have slide properties for just this individual slide where we can change things like our label and transitions. Then we have our slide build properties so that we can transition individual objects onto the slide one at a time. And then we have our object settings where we can change things like opacity and fill color, line color, shadow, corner radius, all of that sort of stuff. Then we have our type uh, properties. And then the last one has different settings depending on which object you have selected. So now that we see all the different tools and properties, let's create our first slide design. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a rectangle here. I'm gonna to go to my object settings, and I'm just gonna put this into the corner, and I'm gonna make this the full size of our slide. And then we can go down, and I'm gonna change the fill color. So I'm gonna change the fill color to kind of this purpley eggplant color, and we'll use that for our background color. Now let's create a couple more rectangles. So this first one we're gonna make uh, pretty big here. This is gonna be about 800 by 800. And let's rotate this. So I'm gonna rotate this 45 degrees and we're gonna make a geometric design. Now as I move this around, you'll see some yellow guides pop up and these are gonna help me center my object right in the center of the screen, exactly where I want it. Now, um, we need a couple more guides to help us with the placement of some other items. So I'm gonna pull up my ruler. I'm gonna drag out a couple guides here and I'm just gonna put them at the center of the sides of my little diamond shape here. So next, I'm gonna copy and paste this. So I'm gonna select it, hit copy, and then paste. And then I'm gonna align this. So I'm gonna move this over and I want my edge right here to line up on my guide. I'm gonna do Control C, Control V one more time. And again, we're gonna make sure it's centered vertically and then I'm gonna align this right over here. So now we have three different uh, diamond shapes there. You can't really see what this looks like yet. I'm gonna actually just drag select down here and it's gonna select the edges of all of those different objects. And then I'm going to change the opacity and you'll see what I've created. So we've created this kind of geometric design and where it overlaps, it's a little bit more opaque. So we don't have to have this set super high. So we can set it right about there. We could change the fill color to, you know, maybe ma uh, maroon. No, let's do magenta. That looks a little bit better. So uh, magenta. And so we have kind of a cool looking design here. And now we can just add some text to put on top of this. So I'm just going to type welcome to the future. And we can uh, select this text. I'm going to go over to my text properties. I'm going to center it. I'm gonna change my font to this uh, phosphate solid font that I have here, and I'm gonna make this pretty large, like a 100 point. So we have this uh, cool looking text on top of our background here, and the last thing we might wanna do is add a drop shadow to this text. So I'm gonna to go to my object settings, down to shadow, and we can change the opacity of this shadow. So I'm gonna kick this up into like the 50, 60 range, 
and we're going to say, I'm not worried about the angle because I want this to be right underneath. So I'm going to just set the length to zero. So my shadow's right underneath, but then I'll kick my radius up to like 20. So we have a nice big soft shadow there. So now we've created our first slide design using all of the built-in objects inside ProPresenter. Now let's create another one that utilizes images and even websites. So I'm going to create a new slide. And I'm just going to delete this text box here and we're going to get rid of our guides because we don't need those anymore and shut our ruler off. So the first thing we're going to do is add a website to the slide. So I'm going to click this web page button here and it's going to add a web page to our slide and you'll see that it defaults to the renewed vision website. Now I can change this by going over to our uh, properties for this object here at the end, these uh, extra settings. And you'll see we have a couple different options. We can change what the website is. And then we also have this option for continuous render. What this does is allows the web page to be continuously drawn so that you can see any animations that are showing on the site. Now, if you don't need this, I wouldn't recommend selecting this option because this is going to be very costly in terms of performance. And so to get the best performance, uh, don't use that option if you don't need to. Now, the other option here is how often do we want this to refresh? Do we want it to just check the site once and show it up there? Or do we want it to check every 10, 30, or 60 seconds and redraw that page? Now just remember that the website feature does require an internet connection, so if you're not connected to the internet, the website won't show up. So I'm just going to select this and we're going to type in a site here. We're going to go to hillsong.com slash LA. We're going to pull up their website and you'll see this will update and we see their website. And so we can change again our object settings for this. So I'm going to push this up into the corner and set this to our slide size of 1280 by 720. So if we just wanted to put a website on a slide so that we could show it on the screen at any time, we could easily just do this. But let's take this a couple steps further. So the next thing that I want to do is add an image to our slide. So I'm going to add an image here and I'm going to grab this iPhone PNG that I have that has some transparency to it. So now we can go in and we can move this around and let's uh, scale this up and make it a little bit bigger. And uh, we're going to make this pretty big because we're going to use this to show what our website would look like on a mobile device. Now the website that we've used, this Hillsong LA website, is actually a mobile friendly site. And so when we resize what the web page is to fit on the screen, it'll actually show us the mobile version. So let's add another website. We're going to go here. We're going to uh, type in hillsong.com slash LA. And then I'm going to resize this to fit the phone. And when it updates, you'll see that it shows us the mobile friendly version or the mobile version of this website. So it'll fit perfectly onto the phone. Now let's, uh, let's add a drop shadow to this phone so it sticks out from the background a little bit. So I'm going to add a shadow to this and we're going to set the radius to like 20 and we're going to set the shadow opacity a little higher and uh, maybe the length to zero so it's right underneath it. So that's sticking out from the background, but we need to put some text over top this. And so we need uh, something to help uh, make this background a little bit more subdued. So I'm going to create a new rectangle. I'm again going to make this full screen by typing in 00, zero and then 1280 by 720. And then I'm going to take the opacity all the way down. I'm going to go to our fill color and then I'm going to grab this color picker. And I'm going to grab a color from this website. So I'm going to grab this kind of brown color they got going on. And then I'm going to just turn my opacity up here and you'll see that it makes it look and fit with the rest of the site. But I only want this to uh, change the look of that background. I don't want this to change the look of the phone area here. So we'll kick that up a little bit more. Now I could use this send to front or send to back option, but I'm going to go over here and we have a listing of all of the different elements and I'm just going to drag this down underneath our phone element right above that website. So now we have kind of a subdued version of the website that we can put text over top of. So let's create some text and we'll say looks great on your mobile device. And we'll say on mobile devices on a different line. We can select this text, go back to our type tool here select a different font so maybe we want to use uh, this font here and we can kick the size up to like 70 
Uh, that might be a little big, so we'll do like 60. And we can grab this and you know move it over. And I obviously could spend some more time making this look nice, but you can see that it looks great. The fact that we can bring in a website and make it look like that is uh, is pretty awesome. Now we're gonna make one more design utilizing our ticker text, um, but instead of doing it here, I'm gonna do it inside of our props because you can create these different designs for more than just uh, regular slides. You can do this for templates, for props, or messages. So let's do this for props. So I'm gonna go up to view, and I'm gonna go down to props. Now we're gonna edit this prop, and you'll see there's nothing on here, so I'm going to create a rectangle here, and uh, this is going to be for a little warning at the bottom of the screen. So we'll just uh, size this down, put it at the bottom. We'll change the color of this to like a red color because it's a warning. And then let's actually create our ticker object. So I'm going to click on this, and it's going to allow us to create our ticker text. Now we can either enter text manually, or we can link to a URL, or we can use a file. Now I'm just going to enter text manually, and I'm going to say, uh, please move to the center of your row. Then we have options for how fast this is and then how it loops. Right now we'll just leave it the way it is and we'll hit OK. So now it's created this object and uh, we can't size this up or down. We can only size it left and right. And basically this is how far it's going to loop. Now we want this to loop the full width. So I'm just going to type in 1280 and I'm going to set my X value to 0 and that'll make sure it's right in the right spot and then I can move this down here on the screen down above this. Now we can actually change our font size here so we can grab a different font so maybe we'll use this font and we can change the size here to like 40 and now let's see what this looks like. So as it comes on it's going to say please move to the center of your row but you'll notice that it says it immediately after and over and over again. So let's fix that. So I'm just going to double click on this object and instead of loop immediately, I'm going to say loop with delay. And now we'll hit OK. And now let's show this again. And you'll see that it's saying please move to the center of your row and then it will go all the way across the screen before it says it again, which is a nicer way to see it. So hopefully you can see how you can create some really advanced designs right inside the editor.